Today we're going to be learning about finding the squares, cubes and roots of common fractions. We're going to start off by taking a look at some of the square and cube numbers that are that is helpful for you to know, just to remind you about them. Okay, so 1 squared is obviously 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, 15 squared is 225, 20 squared is 400, and 25 squared is 625. So those are all square numbers that we've already learned about. And then we've got our cube numbers as well. 1 cubed is 1, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, 5 cubed is 125, 6 cubed is 216, 7 cubed is 343, 8 cubed is 512, 9 cubed is 729, 10 cubed is 1000, 11 cubed is 1331, 12 cubed is 1728, 13 cubed is 2197, 15 cubed is 3375, 20 cubed is 8000, and 25 cubed is 15625. So again, those are just some cube numbers that we've already dealt with, and that is helpful if you know those numbers. Okay, so now we're going to go and do some examples where we're going to be finding the squares, cubes, and roots of common fractions. The first example we're going to look at is this one over here. We have to simplify this as far as possible. You've got 1 and 1 sixth squared. Okay, so what we're going to do when we have a question like this is the very first thing we need to do is we need to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. So if I've got 1 and 1 sixth squared, I need to change the 1 and 1 sixth by multiplying my whole number, which is 1, by the denominator, which is 6, and then adding the numerator. So I've got 1 times 6 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So that's 7 over 6. So before I can work out my exponent, I need to change that from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Then I can go and apply that exponent. I can say 7 squared and 6 squared. So once you've got your fraction as an improper fraction, you then apply the exponent to both the numerator and the denominator, because in this case, that fraction is in brackets and the exponent is outside. So everything inside those brackets needs to be squared. So I have 7 squared, which is 49, over 6 squared, which is 36. Okay, so what you're going to do when you have a question like this, if you've got a fraction that's in brackets and it's squared, if it's a mixed number, you first convert it to an improper fraction, and then you apply that exponent to the numerator and the denominator of that fraction. Okay, so now I'm going to give you one that you're going to do for yourself. This one over here. And you're going to have 30 seconds to work on this. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this case, you had 1 tenth cubed. Now it's not a mixed number, so we don't have to convert anything. We can go straight on to doing our cubing. When I cube 1, it stays the same. And then 10 cubed is 1,000. So you should have got 1 over 1,000 for that example. Next example, question B. We've got 4 over 15 squared. Okay, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to work on this question. Okay, so let's see what you got. So for question B, we had 4 over 15. Again, it's not a mixed number, so I don't have to convert anything. I can go straight ahead and square. So I can say 4 squared is 16 over 15 squared, which is 225. So that's what you should have got for question B. Right, question C. Here you've got 1 and a half in brackets and it's being cubed. I'm going to give you 30 seconds again for this question.
Okay, so let's go through that. So in this one, we had one and a half. That is a mixed number that we need to convert to an improper fraction. So that gives us three over two, and we have to cube that. Once we've converted it to a mixed number, we now or to an improper fraction, we're now going to go and cube the numerator and the denominator. So that, uh, the numerator is 3, cube that, and it gives you 27. Over the denominator, if I cube it, I get 8. So you should have got 27 over 8 for question C. Then question D, we've got 1 and 5 over 7 in brackets squared. And we're going to give you another 30 seconds for this question. Okay, so now we're going to go through that question. So first of all, a mixed number, we're going to convert to an improper fraction. So 1 times 7 is 7, plus 5 is 12. So that gives me 5 over, or 12 over 7. And that we need to square. Then when I square the 12, I get 144. When I square the 7, I get 49. So you should have got 144 over 49 for question D. Right, question E. Here you've got 8 over 12, and you need to square it. And be careful with this one. Remember, the instruction is just simplify as far as possible. Let me give you 30 seconds for this question. Okay, so let's go through that. Now, in this example, there are actually two ways that you can go about this. You can do it in one of two different orders. When you look at this fraction over here, 8 over 12, I hope that you would have noticed that this is actually a fraction that can be simplified. All the examples we've done before now, we could not simplify the fraction that you started with. But in this one, you can simplify it. You can simplify it by dividing the numerator and the denominator both by 4. And that gives you 2 thirds. Okay, so that gives me 2 thirds that needs to be squared. If I square that, I get 2 squared is 4 over 3 squared, which is 9. Okay, now I said that there's another way of doing that, and you can do it like this. You can say 8 over 12, and that must be squared. If I square the 8, I get 64. If I square the 12, I get 144, but then I still need to simplify that fraction. And to simplify that fraction, I'm going to divide, and that will end up giving me 4 over 9 as well. Okay. Now, obviously, this method, you're working with smaller numbers all the way through. It's going to be easier and you're going to be less likely to make mistakes. If you can see early on that you can simplify something, then simplify it before you continue because it's going to actually help you later on. You don't have such big numbers to work with. This one is more complicated, even though it's the exact same question, it's more complicated because you ended up working with much bigger numbers, which you then had to try and simplify. It's easier to simplify when you're working with smaller numbers. Okay, so just be aware of that. There are two ways of doing it. There's nothing wrong with this way. It's just a little bit more difficult because you're working with bigger numbers. Okay, next question. In question F, we have got the square root of 81 over 625. Now, just like when you are squaring or cubing, the same rules apply when you have a square root. If you've got a mixed number, you first convert it to an improper fraction, and then you apply, in this case, the root to both the numerator and the denominator, just like you would with an exponent. Okay, so I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that example. 
So over here we had the square root of 81 over 625. First you look and see if, it's, if there are any mixed numbers. There's not, so we're going to just go and apply our root. So the square root of 81 is 9 over the square root of 625, which is 25. Okay, and if you check that, you can't simplify that any further. So we're done. So that's what we should have got for question F. Question G. Here we've got the cube root of 512 over 2,197. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that quickly. So question G, first of all, it's not a mixed number, so we're going to just go straight ahead and do our, our cube rooting. The cube root of 512 is 8 over the cube root of 2197 is 13. So that's what you should have got for question G. Okay, so then question H, we've got the square root the square root of 14 and 1 over 16. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work this one out as well. Okay, so let's go through that. So for this question, over here, you should have first changed 14 and 1 over 16 to an improper fraction. Now when you do that, 14 times 16 is 224 plus 1 is 225. So you should have got 225 over 16 and we're finding the square root of that. Then the square root of 225 is 15, and the square root of 16 is 4. So that's what you should have got for question H, is 15 over 4. And then question I, over here, you should uh, you need to find the cube root of 1 and 61 over 64. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to work on that question. Okay, so let's go through that. So over here we've got the cube root of 1 and 61 over 64. So first we're going to convert 1 and 61 over 64 to, a, to an improper fraction. So 1 times 64 is obviously 64, plus 61 is 125. So we are finding the cube root of 125 over 64. Right, so now the cube root of 125 is 5. And the cube root of 64 is 4. So that's what we should have got for question I is 5 over 4. Right, now let's go through another example over here. We've got to simplify this as far as possible. In this question, we've got 12 squared over 4 cubed. So here we don't have a fraction in brackets with an exponent outside. We've got a different exponent for our numerator than what we have for our denominator. Okay, so we need to simplify this as far as possible. So first of all, I don't have to worry about changing any mixed numbers to improper fractions or anything like that. So I'm going to go and I'm going to write down my question. I've got 12 squared over 4 cubed. The first thing I need to do is I need to simplify the 12 squared and that gives me 144 over 4 cubed, which is 64. Now, just like we had to do in one of our previous questions, remember, you always have to simplify as far as possible, which means if I get to this over here and I can see, okay, here I've got some 
thing that I can still simplify by, I need to simplify as much as I can. So I'm going to divide both of these as far as possible. Now 144, I can divide by 4, and that's going to give me... Thirty-six. I can divide 64 by 4 and that gives me 16. Okay, now if you look, those are both still can be simplified. Okay, I can divide both of those by 4 again. So 4 goes into 36 9 times, 4 goes into 16 4 times. So when I simplify this as far as possible, I'm going to end up with 9 over 4. So you need to make sure you keep on simplifying until you can't anymore. Okay, right, so now let's go through a couple that you're going to do for yourself. The first one you're going to do is this one over here. We've got 6 cubed over 25 squared. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to work this one out. Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here we've got 6 cubed. When I work out 6 cubed, that gives me 216. Over 25 squared is 625. So you can't simplify that any further. So now we can go on to the next question. Question B. We've got the cube root of 1000 over the square root of 121. I'm going to give you 30 seconds again to work on this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So in this one, the cube root of 1000 is 10 over the square root of 121, which is 11. So that gives you 10 over 11 for question B. Question C, we've got 5 squared over the cube root of 8000. You have 30 seconds again for this question. Okay, so let's go through that. So here we've got 5 squared first, which is 25, over the cube root, I forgot to write the cube root, of 8,000. Okay, so the cube root of 8,000 is 20. Now this fraction I can simplify further, so 25 over 20, they both are divisible by 5. 5 goes into 25 5 times, 5 goes into 20 4 times. So that gives me 20 over, or 5 over 4. So that's what you should have got for question C when you simplify it as far as possible. And then the last question for today, question D, we have got the square root of 225 over 9 cubed. I'm going to give you one minute to work on this question.
Okay, so let's go through this last question. So we've got the square root of 225, you should have found that that was 15, over 9 cubed is 729. Now this fraction can be simplified further. If I divide 729 and 15 both by 3, I'll be able to simplify that. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, and 729 divided by 3 is 243. So that should have given you 5 over 243. For question D. And that is how we find the squares, cubes, and roots of common fractions. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.